Well, hello and welcome to an all new episode of the Transfix Take Podcast, where we are performance driven. It's the week of August 30th, and we are bringing you news, insights, and trends for shippers and carriers from our market expert, Justin Mays. Mays, it is always great to be with you. I cannot believe August has already come to a close, and you know what else that brings? Volatility for Labor Day. Hey, Jenny, it's great to be back with you as well this week as we turn into the final week of August. And as you pointed out, oh boy, there is some volatility headed to the freight markets this week. Not only is it the end of the month and Labor Day weekend, but now we have a major hurricane on our heels. That's right, and we're no longer looking at Tropical Storm Henry. We're actually looking at a region that is more hurricane heavy. That's right, Jenny. Right now, we are gearing up for Hurricane Idalia as it makes its way closer to Florida and could potentially, by the end of the day tomorrow, become a hurricane category three before making landfall in Florida and moving up the East Coast. You know, I always wonder how do they get these names? Idalia is quite lovely. However, this is something that could bring about a lot of volatility, especially as we get on the heels of Labor Day. Exactly, Jenny. This is the disruption that could bring a change in the national rate moving forward for the remainder of 2023. Because not only were we already anticipating a rise in rates this week due to the holiday weekend and end of month, but now we are combining a weather event that could potentially even double the impact that we see in the national average rate. Last year, we experienced a similar event, but it was at the end of September with Hurricane Ian also having impact on the west coast of Florida. Now let's talk historicals. Tell us where we were around this time last year during Labor Day and even post Labor Day with regards to the average rate per mile nationally. Well, Jenny, last year we saw about a 4.5% increase in the national average due to the Labor Day weekend. Then rates came back down slightly, but at the end of September, due to Hurricane Ian, we saw the impact of the national freight markets rise about 4.5% again. So obviously there are a lot of damaging effects that hurricanes do bring about for the uh, towns and cities that they are you know, that they take place in. However, this is the perfect storm that drivers have been looking for in terms of that uptick, that nice, healthy uptick in rate per mile nationwide that they've been looking for for the last almost year. That's right, Jenny. We are certainly going to see volatility brought on by this hurricane. And there's a few reasons. The first being the displacement of capacity. As you know, Jenny, there's a lot of capacity that moves out of the way of the storm. They want to get to safety. Larger fleets usually push their equipment out of the impacted zones and on the flip side there's a lot of capacity that moves to the impacted zones anticipating higher rates leading up and following the storm and the reason for that jenny is there's a lot of replenishment that happens following the storm with essential supplies but also leading up to the storm there's a lot of staging when hurricanes come and let's just use this one for an example it's going to be hitting the west coast of florida Now there's a lot of shippers that are ready for a storm that's not going to make impact until Wednesday evening that are starting to ship essentials to their stores as people go and buy essentials to prepare for the storm. There's also a lot of staging of product of essentials for the worst case of any storm, such as water not being readily available, power being out for several days. A lot of these large shippers and the U.S. government will stage large quantities of supplies within different areas of nearby markets of the storm. For instance, this storm is impacting the west coast of Florida, more on the northern end of Florida, so you're more than likely going to see a lot of freight start heading to markets that are neighboring the North Florida freight markets. And this is an anticipation to fulfill needs of stores or even the federal government and state government immediately after the storm makes impact. And keep in mind, this will not actually account for what will actually happen once the hurricane hits landfall, right? Because shippers are trying their best to accommodate for what could happen specifically with consumers and preparing them for what pre and post hurricane looks like. But those plans can easily be shifted, right, Maze? Well, Jenny, that's capacity. At the same time, shippers have to deal with closures, whether it's due to flooding, power outages, or just letting their employees get home to help keep their family safe or evacuate. There's a lot of facilities that start backing up and freight that needs to leave as they close their facilities for freight leaving. And keep in mind, this is not accounting for the freight that is already headed towards that region because it is the normal freight that heads towards that region, even if there is a hurricane or not. So with elevated amounts of freight already being shipped at the end of the month, combined now with more freight in the market, 
due to staging or relief efforts, we are going to see a rather intensifying spot market with rates increasing more than we originally anticipated, which was around 5%. Now I believe we could see them as high as 10% especially in the southeast. And certainly that is the incredible jump that I think drivers were looking for, unfortunately, at the risk of what could potentially be a catastrophic hurricane. That's right, Jenny. Our thoughts and prayers are definitely with anyone in the path of the hurricane. And we thank all the incredible drivers out there that keep freight moving even during natural disasters. I couldn't have said it better myself, Maze. I completely agree. Now, I guess that leads me to ask you, do you think that this has completely changed the trajectory of where post Labor Day and beyond through the rest of 2023 could look like? Originally, we anticipated rates to rise about 5% going into the Labor Day weekend and then see them decline again back to where they have been the last two weeks. But now, Jenny, I believe we are going to see that double whammy of the hurricane and Labor Day weekend pump up rates even higher and causing more capacity displacement and more disruption in supply chains where we're going to see that impact last longer. Now I still think rates are going to decline back downward, they're just not going to go back down as far as where they've been the last two weeks. Okay, so stepping away from the hurricane for a little bit, let's talk about the current state of tender rejections and what we're seeing there. We have started seeing the freight market at a national level start to stabilize over the last week and a half to two weeks. Now, tender rejections have gone up past 4%, and now I believe that they could go as high as 5% in the next two weeks, surpassing what I called out last week around 4.5%. And that's due to the hurricane, followed immediately by the Labor Day weekend. But currently, they're slightly above 4%. And when we look at overall volume in the market, it still remains strong. It picked up some steam in the last week, and to be honest, we're probably going to see it surpass new highs of 2023 going into the end of month and shippers pushing even more volume now ahead of the hurricane and Labor Day weekend. Okay, Maze. Well, we have a great idea of what's happening with tender rejections, with volume and with the weather. But you know what it's time for the regional breakdown maze. Why don't we get started in the West Coast? Any major call outs there? We have seen some gears start to shift in California as Southern California really loosened up and it really is following course of Arizona which continues to be one of the loosest states in the country. Along with those west coast states comes Texas. Texas overall is continuing to be the most dominant state for shippers to bring down rates. Now carriers are going to get paid a premium going there but they are not going to find such luck leaving the state of Texas regardless of what market they're in. All right and what's happening over on the opposite coast? the East Coast. On the flip side, Jenny, there hasn't been much change. New Jersey and Ohio continue to be very tight markets where shippers are not having as much ease finding carriers at the rates that they've been looking for and carriers have more selection with better paying freight. Now last week we caught out Ohio being the tightest state in the country with rates increasing at their fastest pace, but it has spilled over now into parts of Indiana and Illinois where those states are also seeing tighter capacity, pushing the overall rates up. Okay, and I know things have shifted quite a bit, but why don't we talk about one of the more previously favored regions in the Southeast? Now, this week is definitely going to start shifting things around because as we've been calling out the last couple of weeks, going down to the Southeast was highly expensive. It's one of the worst regions to be ending up in this time of the year due to seasonality. But due to now this significant weather event, we may start seeing rates not climb as steadily as we have been seeing going out to the southeast, as some carriers may opt to go there at lower paying rates because they know that now, due to this natural disaster, they may be able to get higher rates in operating in the southeast for the next two to three weeks. And Maze, why don't we wrap this up with the Northeast, Midwest, and South regions? Overall, freight leaving the Midwest and Northeast continues to pick up steam, as we traditionally see going into the fall months. And freight leaving the South and parts of the West Coast continue to see declines in pressure. Well, this is certainly going to be an exciting couple of weeks, maybe even an exciting quarter or second half of the year, as it seems that not just the volatility of hurricane season, but also peak holiday season, which we haven't even touched yet. 
But of course, we're gonna keep an eye on any major changes and report back as we see them. Maze, before we head out, is there anything else we should be keeping an eye on? That's right, Jenny, there's one more thing that we wanted to call out this week. It's something that we briefly mentioned a few weeks ago, and that's the drought at the Panama Canal. It's not getting a whole lot of attention because there's no impact just yet, but it's only been getting worse and it's projected to continue for quite a long time. And that is the pile up of vessels. Oh no, this is sounding so familiar, Maze. That's right, Jenny. I'm sorry if I gave you deja vu, but that's right. Again, a pile up of vessels very similar to the images we saw in the Southern California ports throughout the pandemic, we are now seeing down in the Panama Canal. A little over a week ago, there was over 200, that's right, Jenny, 200 vessels waiting to get through the waterway. Now that's 200 on both sides, but that's a lot of vessels and that's a lot of freight. Now a lot of the freight that goes through the canal are tankers and we're not seeing an impact just yet on things of fuel or agriculture needs, but it's something to continue to keep an eye on, whether it's cargo ships coming in with inventories or tankers with fuel. With over 200 waiting on average about 18 days to get through the passage and no end in sight, this is something we're going to keep our pulse on because it could have longer term impacts on how shippers either bring freight into the U.S., ship freight out of the U.S., or just the overall impacts to delays and expedited needs. Well, Maze, you couldn't be more right. I think this is going to be a very interesting second half of the year. And of course, it's the, it's the world of transportation. Couldn't expect anything else. That's right, Jenny. One last thing about the hurricane. I would say thank you again to all the drivers who will be participating in any relief loads or staging. And thank you for everything they have done in the past through any natural disaster or the pandemic. On the flip side, shippers out there, just remember we anticipate for there to be delays. There are going to be issues within supply chains and we got to keep that in mind as we all work together as one to continue to move and drive through these events that occur naturally in the freight markets. Great wrap up, Maze. Have a great Labor Day weekend to you and everyone who's listening out there. That said, we will see you next week with an all new episode of the Transfix Take podcast. And until then, as always, please drive safely. All views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of Transfix Inc. or any parent companies or affiliates or the companies with which the participants are affiliated and may have been previously disseminated by them. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are based upon information considered reliable, but neither Transfix Inc. nor its affiliates nor the companies with which the participants are affiliated warrant its completeness or accuracy and it should not be relied upon as such. All views and opinions are subject to change.